I'm not gonna lie, there's one specific thing that I was not on board for with this. Hey guys, it's G from the effort here to review Ida, um, Netflix's first Argentine offering. Now, Ida is about Ida herself, a designer, and her brand called Ida. And her rise to becoming one of the top fashion designers and her clothing line being one of the top around against her competitors, all sorts of stuff. It also involves her company, the people involved, what they felt had to be done to build the brand, what they had to do, and the people involved in those doings from the lower level to the middle to the high and how it affected their lives and it's backstabbings and lies and all sorts of stuff that kind of tie into this world. She meets somebody from the street that is on a different path that she doesn't know about. She finds kind of a rising star in this person that is more or less on the lower class. But again, she doesn't know really his story. He knows a little bit about her. And you'll find out if you decide to watch this, how those two storylines intersect and what they all mean. And of course, as things come to light, events happen, people get upset, a very soap opera type of show surrounded by the fashion world. So there are some good things about this. Uh, I've seen a couple reviews or a couple ratings that it's, you know, on the lower level. I wouldn't disagree with them, and I think a lot of it has to do with one specific thing, but I'll get into that into my next section. As far as a soap opera goes, this is not too bad. Uh, it's got better characters than I've seen on, like, a Days of Our Lives or those other ones. I just only remember really Days of Our Lives. Decent characters, uh, some decent cinematography, pretty decent writing for the most part, uh, pretty good shots. Uh, this was shot in Buenos Aires. I was hoping for a few more landscape shots to really get a feel for the area and the landscape. I didn't really get that as much, but for the most part, generally a decent foundation. I did like the character of Ida. She's very strong. She's dealt with a lot of stuff that was revealed in the show and more so later on. Um, it, I liked how the show showed some of her genius and how she's able to adapt as a designer and a thought process. I like some of the people that were around her with her company. The other character, Tio, that kind of comes into a world and he becomes a rising star. He's got a pretty decent storyline with some characters on his side of it from the lower class and it all is kind of threaded together, pun intended, into this fashion world that they all occupy. So some pretty decent performances there. This may sound weird, there's some pretty decent freestyle rapping. There's apparently the kids in this show hang around and rap battle and it wasn't bad. They had some good flow to them, had some good beats and I'm a huge rap guy so I was like, that's all right. You know, didn't really add much, but it didn't take away from anything. There is one glaring issue in this show, and I feel it is my responsibility to say it right now. Otherwise, I may be at risk of making light of a very creepy issue. Something happens with a minor, a 16-year-old, and someone a little bit older, quite older, which is illegal and is really creepy and really eerie. And I'm trying to understand why they went that route. Uh, it, it, they, they do say it in the show, and it's kind of not dealt with in a normal way. And they do that with other things. Um, there are a lot of reveals that happen, and the characters don't react how you think they would react. And it just kind of happens, and it moves on like nothing happened. And I was expecting a little bit more. But for that particular thing, and yes, I'm telling you, and yes, it's a bit of a spoiler, but on the one hand, it's minor to the story overall. But to me, it's quite major as to why I don't know if I could recommend this show to somebody because I don't know how you can make a show like this. I don't care where you're from for the public on Netflix for people to see and deal with something like sex with minors and continue on and just say, yeah, here you go. You should be fine with it. Um, we've seen it before, but most of the time when you see it, it is dealt with in a normal matter. And that was kind of my biggest issue with this because there are a lot of other things. It is quite unfocused. It does tend to be too self-serious for its own good. It does stray away from certain things that were interesting to introduce other things that were there to add but took away from something that could have been a little bit better. But that particular thing really bugged me and just the way that it was handled and how light it made of that situation. So that's my quick review of Ida. Like I said, that one issue could be the defining factor between you even checking this out or you taking a look at it 
to see how it folds in just for your own curiosity. I just kind of want to let people know about it because it is a big thing and it is handled in not the best way possible. At least in my opinion, you might have a different opinion on it. It's a really weird and eerie, creepy, creepy subject. So I don't know. I leave that to you. Was not for me. So based on that, do I recommend it to somebody? Maybe. If you take that out of it, doesn't bother you, I would say maybe take a look at it. There are some interesting themes and concepts that they use regarding the, the fashion world that I personally haven't seen. Uh, some behind the scenes stuff. There are some stuff involving uh, sweatshops. Really right off the bat, they show that in the, in the first episode. So they do touch on So, Ida, have you taken a look at it? If you have, let me know what you think because I'd love to hear from you. You can find me on Twitter at the F4G. You can email us at the F4 podcast at gmail.com. Make sure you're following Entertain Facts on Instagram. And until next time, I'm G and I am out.